Did you know that there is a 40% increased risk for obese women to develop breast cancer? If you're wondering how the two are correlated, then you're in the right place. Today, we'll be following along Mrs. Jones on her visit to her family doctor. Mrs. Jones is a middle-aged woman who has been diagnosed as overweight previously. Since she has a history of breast cancer in the family, her family doctor will go through the relationship between obesity and breast cancer. Hey, Mrs. Jones, as we've discussed, today I'll be showing you how your adipose cells might be interacting with tumor cells on the molecular level. But first, what do you think of when you hear obesity? Um, heavier weight compared to one's height? Mm -hmm. Typically, obesity means unhealthy expansion of fat tissue. The health of fat tissue can be measured in different ways, including the volume, which is the size of fat tissue called the adipose tissue, and the quality of adipose tissue. During weight gain, adipocytes, also known as fat cells, gets bigger. When adipocytes gets bigger, the vessel surrounding the fat cell can't supply enough oxygen to the cell. Just like we die when we don't have enough oxygen, adipocytes also die when there's not enough oxygen. When an adipocyte dies, its inside spills out, which triggers immune warriors called macrophages to gather in the area, since they combat foreign substances. However, gathering of macrophages and their activity causes swelling, or inflammation. So, to put it simply, obese individuals experience enlarged fat cells, which leads to a lack of oxygen and inflammation due to bursting from the death of adipocyte. Wait, but I thought I was coming in for breast cancer screening. How does being overweight increase the risk of me being diagnosed with breast cancer? The breast tissue is highly composed of adipose tissue, meaning that fat cells make the majority of the microenvironment where tumors can form. When there is excess adipose tissue, it can lead to the creation of a pro-tumor environment. Oh, I see. But how does being overweight lead to cancerous growth in the body? By having more fat tissue in this area, there is an increased chance of cancerous formations due to rise in estrogen levels. Since fat cells also produce estrogen, raised estrogen levels lead to increased cell proliferation, which can lead to tumor growth. So what you're saying is that the extra adipose in my body is increasing my overall tumor risk. But how do those two even connect? To put it simply, macrophages are the connecting piece of the puzzle. I mentioned macrophages briefly before, but to explain more in depth, they are immune cells which are known as the big eaters in the human body. They can physically ingest disease cells by devouring them in a process called phagocytosis. You would think that this would actually help against a tumor because it kills disease cells, but in reality, their presence correlates with reduced cancer survival. Wait, so these big eaters actually help tumors? Exactly. In simple terms, the tumor cells are able to manipulate macrophages, either through a hijacking mechanism or by developing undercover signals on the surface of cells. And since obesity is a chronic state of low-grade inflammation, macrophages are readily available. The hijacking mechanism allows them to take control of your cellular machinery and the macrophages release inflammatory signaling molecules, all of which induce tumor cell growth. Alternatively, the undercover signals are formed when tumor cells express receptors on their surfaces. These receptors essentially scream, don't eat me, at the macrophages, which allows the tumor cells to cover themselves from being caught by the macrophages. So they literally hijack your body or hide from immune fighters to hurt you. Wow, but if tumor cells can hijack people's bodies and hide from macrophages, which help the body, is there a way for an obese individual with breast cancer to get better? For sure. Recent research has actually discovered that fasting can target both obesity and breast cancer. Caloric restriction and intermittent fasting are two methods to reduce energy intake, which causes weight loss, in addition to having therapeutic effects for breast cancer tumor reduction. Wow! What exactly is caloric restriction and intermittent fasting? Caloric restriction is where an individual reduces 10 to 40% of their daily intake, meaning they will simply eat a smaller portion than usual. But intermittent fasting is when you eat only during a certain window of time during the day. I'm sure you know some people who will eat only between 12 to 8 p.m. and fast for the remaining hours of the day. Yes, some of my family members actually fast intermittently. but how does that help breast cancer? Fasting actually reverses the enlargement of adipose tissue. As I mentioned before, inflammation occurs when the fat cell becomes too big and isn't able to receive enough oxygen from the surrounding blood vessels. 
So when the cell decreases in size with fasting, the cell is now able to receive adequate amounts of oxygen flow, so it doesn't die or become inflamed. And since the fat cell isn't inflamed anymore, it won't produce signaling molecules that induce tumor growth. I see. So I would basically be treating obesity and breast cancer by simply changing my diet. Yes, although since research is new, this is usually done in conjunction with chemotherapy, which we can explore more in the future. Thanks, Doc. Great seeing you today and really learned lots.